Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another Starseed reading. This one we are tuning back into the Hadarians, which I'm very excited about. And I bet you guys are excited too. I'm really, really just blown away really by how many Hadarians have come out of the woodwork since I started. I've only posted a few videos, you know, about the Hadarians or, you know, transmitted from the Hadarians and you guys are finding them and we are creating a little bit of a Hadarian vortex here, which is really exciting. And I didn't expect it to happen, even though in hindsight, I should have known that this would happen because my first and foremost intention for starting this project was to connect with my soul family. So just thank you for showing up and for finding me when I am just barely getting this project off the ground. And before I get to the cards, one thing I would just like to mention is that the Hadarians, at least, you know, the ones that I tune into, are... <laughs> I was going to say they're excited, but of course, they're always excited. So they're even more excited at the moment because they know some kind of surprise is coming. I don't really know if it's from them, but there is some kind of surprise coming for us and they know about it and I can like hear them giggling. <laughs> they're, they're extra excited for this surprise and normally I hate surprises, but uh, this is, you know, my group of sisters and if they're excited, then I know it's a surprise that I'm going to like. I don't know what it is yet, but I don't know. Keep your eyes out for anything. <laughs> unexpected that just kind of drops out of the sky on you. Um, they want you to know that something good is coming. It's going to be really good. And that might come as a bit of a <laughs> surprise in and of itself because right now I think you guys are feeling like you're kind of stuck in some kind of ego battle. The, I was really surprised this wasn't what I thought would come through because your center self here is this five of fire. You can see there's these two really strong, really masculine, really fiery beings fighting it out here. This is a lot of, of conflict and it is really a battle of wills. They seem to be evenly matched, but they're trying to prove who is supreme. <laughs> it, it really, really speaks to me of an ego battle. And there's actually a lot of fire energy just concentrated right here with the five of fire, the six of fire, and then the queen of fire. Um, I think for a lot of us, anybody really resonating Hadarian, fire energy might be a bit challenging, a bit foreign to us because we can be so watery, <laughs> um, which is reflected down here. There's a lot of water in the spread as well. But if you're watching this near when I post it in uh, like end of July 2020, we just went into Leo season. And I don't know about you guys, but as soon as the sun went into Leo, this um, this shift from water energy from Cancer into this fire energy of Leo, especially it being Leo with so much about the ego and about yourself and about shining, especially you can kind of get into like battles about who shines brightest with you and somebody else. So I think the question here is why would you have possibly manifested this ego battle for yourself? The trick here is to remember that we really are creating our realities and our environment is a reflection of ourself. So why, if you're in some kind of ego battle with a boss, a coworker, your partner, a family member, a friend, or even just the collective, you know, sometimes we can get really, uh, um, like star seed versus earth seed or, you know, smart people versus stupid people, whatever it is, feeling a little conflicted. Not that I think you guys are really egotistical or any of that. That is not, that is not the thing. So that actually might be even why it is more of a surprise to you that you've ended up in this ego battle. And if you're not thinking that it's an ego battle, if you've been noticing some tension with somebody or with some situation, see if it is coming down to a contest of wills. I've been noticing that myself, and honestly, I don't entirely know how to figure it out. I keep I keep trying to sort that out, going, okay, why am I manifesting this egoic struggle? How do I, what is the lesson here? What do I need to resolve within myself to move past this? And 
I'm still in the middle of that and I think you guys are as well. So I guess it really makes a lot of sense that this reading is coming up. So let's get into the cards and see if we can figure out what is going on here with this ego battle. Um, okay, so your energetic health is the two of water. Yeah, you guys are much more comfortable, you know, watery environment. I think for most of us, literally, uh, I live out in the desert and I can't, it kills me to live out in the desert. I need to live by the water. I need to live by the ocean where everything is in flow. And the two of, two of water is also like a soulmate card, right? This You're used to existing in harmony with others. Going back to Hadar, we existed in perfect harmony with our soul family, with our collectives. We were hive minds, right? We were collectives on Hadar. And we, we remember that. That is our energetic state. But interestingly, limitations and karma, this card, this two of air, as you it doesn't take a genius to notice that this card is all about duality, right? This is a card of polarity. You got black and white, you know, light and dark, yin and yang. This is you having descended to, descended to this place of duality. And maybe that is where this ego battle is coming from. Trying to resolve this experience of self and other. Trying to resolve this experience of duality. We are apparently choosing to do it through... facing the other you know you think of yourself as your own self and you see somebody else as this other figure and then that triggers that that duality right there triggers this battle of wills or this ego battle interesting so any ego battle or any power struggle you're having with another person is just another expression of of duality so i think sinking deeper into the understanding, the remembrance of the law of one and sinking deeper into that, you know, moments of experience of non-duality. I mean, if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know that I'm not, you know, into being a complete, you know, ascetic, right? I'm not into tossing out my material world, you know, because I, I feel like I came down here and I didn't come here just to throw the world away, right? I want to have my cake and eat it too. So this isn't about you know, going, going to be a monk on top of the mountaintop. This is about being able to step in to that experience of non-duality and experience the death of your ego. But then as soon as you want to, to step back out of it and zoom right back into living your normal life. So I think this power struggle is just one manifestation of how we are working through that. Let's see. Yeah, the Akashic position is this counselor that would be like the knight of water, the 12 of water. And definitely deeply, deeply connected to water in our past lives. We also have the eight of water down here in the healing position. This card, this isn't really like the eight of cups. This card is all about gratitude and coming into alignment. Gratitude for who you are, gratitude for what you have. Mm, and this is something to heal, to heal. Maybe you feel like comparing yourself to others and then you end up feeling inadequate or insecure or not enough or that they are so much, they shine so much brighter than you. There's an invitation here to be kinder to yourself and to be grateful for your own, your own gifts, your own self, your own presentation the way you show up knowing that you are shining exactly how you are supposed to be shining in this moment yeah and i'm looking up at the this is your ambitions card the child i take this to mean that we all want to be we want to be free we want to be free like free of our schedules, free of all of these artificial matrices that we have constructed. You know, we want to be truly experiencing that interdimensional, omnidimensional, you know, 5D, whatever you want to call it, that freedom from these constructs. You know, when you were a child, you ran around, you didn't even really have a concept of time. You didn't have a concept of time. You just ran around 
chasing dragonflies with your butterfly net, <laughs> experiencing the freedom of running down the grassy field, just feeling the wind in your hair, you know, the grass in your feet. And that is what we are longing to get back to, but we are feeling that there's too much of this. There's too many people in our way. We're feeling like there's too many people in our way and it's causing us to butt heads against them. Okay, so looking back at this five of fire, this center conflict, this ego battle that we're all in, sitting on top of the sensual, this is the night of earth, if you will, all about serving and communicating that is in our deep Akashic past. If you have, up until this point, been living not really as a servant, but service-oriented, always working for the good of others, always maybe looking after others, sometimes before you looked after yourself. Yeah, kind of stuck in the king's servant position. I know what this is now. You guys have actually been almost playing second fiddle, even though it was never because of your skill. It was never because of your skill. You have been highly skilled all along, so why have you been playing second fiddle? You could have been first fiddle, right? You could have been the boss. You could have been the champion, but instead you've been, you know, the hero's squire. You've been always in second place for no good reason, for no good reason. So that is why this, mm, especially if you're watching this in Leo season or you're having some kind of, you know, fifth house transit or whatever, right? There's something here about this ego battle is actually here to help you like titrate up into higher expressions of of your self-confidence but the trick here is to not become you know arrogant about it right and i don't think that's really going to be a problem for you guys i don't i don't get an arrogant vibe off you guys at all in fact quite the opposite you guys are probably um a lot more humble than you need to be but you still deserve to understand who you are in your entirety and to shine yourself, shine your light out and to claim the place that, you know, has been reserved for you, that has been waiting for you. You don't need to be sitting in the servant's position or in the second position. You don't need to be the runner up or the, you know, you don't need to be Robin. You can be Batman. <laughs> this four of wands moving from the, or not wands, fire, sorry. Um, moving from the Five of Fire into the Four of Wands. This is your spiritual journey. Look how focused this guy is. This guy is focused and it is no longer in conflict. This is not conflicted. This is a, a being here who has entirely... They have their eye on the target. They know what they're doing. They know they have the skill because they have practiced with this bow all of their lives and they know they can hit the mark. It's just a matter of focusing and doing it. So big, big invitation here to be focusing on your trajectory. Focus on your trajectory. Yeah, and that is going to be coming, helping you build this heart of fire, building a heart of fire. Your strengths here is actually the queen of wands, the queen of, or the queen of fire here. <laughs> so it, I don't know why I keep translating these back to the traditional tarot because this deck doesn't actually translate that well. This queen of fire though, I love it. Look at, she's got this cat, this Leo energy, these butterflies of transformation. And here she is. She is here. She is this. Opal in her third eye. This is you. This is your strengths. You guys have the fiery passion and the fiery power to focus your trajectory on your goal and to use your passion to get there. I feel like you guys might worry that you don't have enough energy or you don't have enough 
passion, you don't have enough fire element. I mean, this deck is so elemental, right? That the suits are all the four elements. And there's really something here about braiding in more fire energy. You know, that can go into your sacral chakra and your solar plexus. Just bringing that fiery passion in because that is such a, that can be a sustaining power. I mean, it can also just like flame on and then burn out, right? Maybe that's what you guys are worried about. Maybe in the past when you've tapped into your passion or tapped into your fiery temper even, or just your, however you perceive this fire element to be working within you, whatever your relationship is to fire, maybe it has burned you in the past and you're forgetting that you have this power of the queen of fire. But at the same time, you're, since you remember it on some level, <laughs> you're kind of testing it, testing the waters, you're testing your power when you go through these power struggles with others. Yeah, but this time when you guys engage in, you know, engage in your confidence, engage in your power, engage your solar plexus or your... I'm sorry, guys, how long, how long was that out of focus? I fixed it now. <laughs> when you engage in your power, your fiery power, your sovereign power is the queen of fire. This time it has an innocence to it. It is like... As soon as you can let go of the struggle to compare yourself to others, and I think that is really where this is coming from, you know, get off of Instagram, get off of YouTube, stop doing the comparison game, stop engaging in the comparison trap. It just artificially pings your insecurities and then makes you go into this mode of power struggle. And I mean, that's fine. That is part of the process here. You know, but if you want to speed up this process and get out of this, like, conflict more quickly, um, it is <laughs> kind of like a, like a new layer of letting go. A new layer of letting go. Like, I, I mean, I know you guys are already marching to the beat of your own drum, right? I, <laughs> I know you guys are all already the kind of an outsider. You know, you've always felt like a little bit of an alien and stuff like that. So you guys are already like non-conformists you guys don't conform to society not really right but i think there's an invitation here to let go of societal expectations even more somewhere in the, your life society is putting uh restrictions or expectations on you or you're putting them on yourself or a family member is putting them on you and you know you are allowing all these things to kind of control you and that is making you feel uh, out of focus and conflicted so you want to be able you want to be coming back into focus and what i was saying is there's going to be like it's going to be lighter and more childlike and more innocent this time because of the child and you also have the maiden up here this is the your the maiden in your emotions and love i love seeing the child and the maiden because that is just bringing this back to innocence and the hadarians love that because they are even though they are wise you know uh, intergalactic travelers they have they're just so <laughs> gleefully and to us childlike they're gleefully childlike from that is how we would describe them and so this is really tapping into that youthful youthful energies and seeing everything with new eyes seeing everything with new eyes so this time when you engage in your power and your passion and your solar plexus and your sacral chakra and just your the element of fire this time when you engage in it it can it's not going to get out of hand because this time it's coming into balance. That's because if you look here, we have three water cards, three fire cards, an air card, two earth cards, and then two major arcana. So the fire and the water elements are really, really balanced here. And that is what will help you like make it work this time. This is what will help you make it work this time. And the ultimate outcome here is this six of earth. This is just like the six of pentacles all coming into balance. This, <laughs> this guy, he is bringing the harvest in. He has worked hard bringing in the harvest. Food in one hand, a sickle in the other. 
I just thinking of a the phrase, you know, first he giveth and then he taketh away. <laughs> I feel like this guy is here to bring you back into balance, to bring you back into balance because of the, the giving of the fruit in one hand and the sickle in the other. If you think, how did he harvest that abundance he's bringing in? Well, he harvested it with the sickle. <laughs> taking from one place to give to another place. This is, to me, this figure here, this harvesting figure is representative of maybe your guides, maybe the, just the universe itself, bringing everything back into balance, resolving this experience of duality and resolving this dichotomy between the water and the fire. And it is just the temporary process of tempering this all that is causing this ego battle. I feel like this whole reading, this whole reading boils down to some kind of interpersonal, not necessarily interpersonal, some kind of conflict between your internal self and your external reality. And it's going to be an uncomfortable process while you boil all this down, boil it all together, but eventually it's going to come out alchemized. We just need to get through this feelings of being burnt. You know, it's not a serious burn, guys. It's just a sunburn. So <laughs> it's going to heal. We're going to come back into balance and we're going to get over this Leo-induced power struggle. Okay, I think I'm going to pull Shocker reading cards today. It's a little weird doing a Starseed reading without any Starseed cards, but this is what wanted to come through. Ooh, clarity. Yeah, so whatever you've been confused about, whatever has been kind of shrouded in darkness or in shrouded in the veil, shrouded in murk, this is going to be clearing up. You have these Look at these beautiful crystals absorbing the like shadowy particles. <laughs> I feel like if there were if there was like black dust, like black shadowy particles around you, these crystals would come absorb them and clear them up almost like a like a magical eraser, like a crystalline eraser. And what's going to be left is clarity. Oh, and I like that all of this fire energy. The thing to remember about fire energy is it can burn and it can be too much, but it also leaves everything purified. Anything that doesn't burn up is purified, but if you think anything that has been burned has really basically been reduced to pure carbon. <laughs> so this conflict, you're going to be purifying who you really are, who you really are. I feel like there's been external influences. It could be people, it could just be, you know, like I was saying, expectations. It can also include expectations or false beliefs you've put upon yourself. But that's all going to be, that's what you're doing right now with this, this Archer card here. Focusing, focusing, remembering who you are in your most kind of crystal clear, pure expression and this conflict is going to be helping you identify what's not you what is not purely you and and tossing that out so you're left with a greater sense of clarity on who you actually are forgiveness okay yeah whatever conflict you're in right now <laughs> I, I almost hate talking about this because this is when it, everything sounds so cliche. It's like, yes, you know, just forgive everything and all your problems will be solved. My dog doesn't like that either. Can you guys hear him growling? But as, as cliche as it is, it really... I mean, I've certainly learned and I'm constantly learning, right? It's not like I sit here in this perfect um, vortex of perfect forgiveness of everything. But every time I think it's a bunch of bullshit and then come back to moving through 
practicing forgiveness, I am reminded again and again how much it actually works. You know, of course, this includes forgiving every others. Of course, it includes forgiving yourself. But for me, the most important aspect to like focus my forgiveness on is actually like just the entire system, the entire experience of being here. You know, we start to take this reality so seriously and we forget that it's a simulation we created for ourselves that we designed for ourselves for our own purposes <laughs> so i know for me when i remember that this whole experience is something i did to myself and then that really allows me to forgive the entire thing that this is all a simulated experience and eventually we all return back to our higher selves to our oversouls to source and this nothing that is happening here is really matters at all <laughs> so finding that perspective and remembering to give the entire forgive the entire simulation forgive the entire game that way you know you can really cut through so many of your problems all of your problems really if you can really do this you know, everything horrible that's ever happened to you, everything horrible you've ever done to anybody else. This goes all the way back into your past lives, your parallel lives, your future lives, your ancestry. And, you know, this goes up into higher densities, all of it. Forgiving the entire game allows you to come into a place of just first equanimity and neutrality to observe your experience. And then after that, you can start to layer in, you know, those the higher, vi higher vibrational feelings that you want to be experiencing, like, you know, unconditional love and joy and ecstasy and all of those things. But forgiveness first to like neutralize and like reset the d reset. It's like hitting the reset button on your whole uh, earthly experience. Nurturing. Yeah, I take this to really, for you guys in this spread, this is nurturing yourself. This is nurturing yourself because you guys are, as we are already talking about, you guys are coming into this awareness that, I mean, I know you, most of you already knew this. You already knew that your environment is a reflection of yourself. You knew it, but you didn't, there's a difference between knowing it and a difference between like really experiencing it, understanding that experientially and viscerally. I know this is relevant for you guys because this is a lesson I've been learning like in the last couple of weeks, really starting to notice and really understand and really experience how much my external reality is a reflection of my own self. It is, this is a learning process and I am right there learning this exactly as you guys are learning it. That is why we are all syncing up for this particular reading. And anybody tuning into this in the future, that just means you guys are catching up or you know, you're know you playing out this energy bubble whenever you guys are watching this and we played this energy bubble out now, you know? <laughs> but we all are pooling together across time and space to experience this all together at the, wherever this reading exists in the Omniverse, so. <laughs> That card coming up is just a reminder, reminder to nurture yourself because once when you do that, you are nurturing your environment by reflection and it will start to reflect back much more nurturing for you. And if you're ever feeling like, why doesn't anybody ever give me anything? Why doesn't any, anybody ever give me a break? Why doesn't everybody ever cook breakfast for me? First, you got to ask yourself, do you ever do that for anybody else? Maybe, you know, <laughs> maybe you don't give anybody else a break. That would be something... <laughs> That would be a message for me, you know, or if you're always cooking somebody else breakfast and you think, why aren't they cooking breakfast for you? Well, really think about that. Really think about that. What lesson would your higher self want you to learn from this situation? Why don't they cook you breakfast? How are you somehow creating the situation where they don't cook you breakfast? And the point here isn't to, you know, figure out like, you know, what you're doing wrong in your relationship or anything. It's something, something energetic. There's something to do with, you know, your, your energy body, really. What are you trying to hide? And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's like, say you want somebody to cook you breakfast because you cook them breakfast every weekend. 
but they never cook breakfast for you. Why is that? One, this is just an example. One possible example is somebody in that situation could have a really blocked sacral chakra and that interferes with their ability to give and receive love fully and fluidly and, you know, just cyclically, reciproc reciprocally. So they're kind of overcompensating by always giving love. But even then, you know, if you're cooking for cooking breakfast for somebody every weekend and you're kind of resentful because they never cook breakfast for you, that's not really coming from a hard space, right? That's just, you know, doing it from some kind of self-imposed sense of duty or you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to show my love, you know, I'm going to demonstrate my love by doing this thing. And, you know, but if you're, if you still have this block to your sacral, well, that is, that is the real energetic root problem of why this isn't flowing the way you want it to. So you can even forget entirely about figuring out the details of what is going wrong in your in your material like reality dynamics and think strictly energetically like with your own energy body or your own energetic cycles your own soul cycles what is going on on that level that is you know causing this problem for you this conflict Ooh, <laughs> flexibility. I feel like this is some advice for all of us moving forward. <laughs> um, this is a tough one for me. Uh, I have been extremely, extremely rigid in my past, um, really wanting to do everything according to my schedule, <laughs> my way, and I am incredibly not spontaneous. But of course, here we are moving into, you know, the new fluid way of being. Let's see if I can move the new fluid way of being you know moving into fluidity and formlessness and we're all going to have to learn to be flexible i think i take that as obviously just on a practical level where we all need to be prepared for all kinds of crazy shit coming our way over the next like five or six years um i guess that this is like a side message i don't want to be making you know predictions I'm not really saying anything like that. I would just, I feel guided to share my personal perception that shit is going to be crazy until 2025, 2026. I don't know. I don't have a sense of what's going on. I just feel like the world is going to feel out of balance through then. And those dates specifically because Saturn moving through Aquarius and then Saturn through Pisces. And then Saturn enters Aries a couple months apart from Saturn, uh, from Neptune entering Aries in 2025. And I feel like once Saturn and Neptune are back in Aries, that is what things are going to start to really solidify. So flexibility, <laughs> flexibility with your material life, your material reality and flexibility in your energetic life, your energy body. There's going to be so many opportunities to clear out blocks to your chakras, clearing out intrusions into your, you know, your morphic field, clearing all of that out and being flexible about how you do it and when it happens is going to be key, especially you guys might want to practice just being more, it's not exactly even spontaneous, but doing things only when you feel inspired to do them. I mean, I know everybody's always preaching, you know, follow your, follow your intuition, follow your intuition. And I think most of us only take that so far. We keep going, oh yeah, I accept. Oh yeah, I accept. You know, I follow my intuition, except for when I need to do this or except for when I need to do that. There's an invitation here to just run an experiment for a week, right? Run an experiment for a week and say, okay, for one week, I'm going to only do anything if I feel genuinely inspired to do it what and see what happens see what happens and I mean you know maybe your life is whatever and you can't do that except for like a day or you know maybe even just an hour wherever you can and I this is you know this isn't a recommendation coming from me this is a recommendation you know I've been receiving and I've been trying to put into place and I've been practicing with it so you know I don't want everybody to think I'm trying to tell you what to do this is just <laughs> this is just what, what's coming through and it's something I'm doing as well I'm taking it as advice for myself and you know you guys will obviously do only what resonates
I trust. <laughs> so yeah, you know, try running an experiment where you only ever do what is fully inspiring and fully intuitively guided for you. That is when you step into like cosmically, divinely guided, mysteriously flowing through your life in a way that your rational mind and your ego body could never manage. But if you can, I think if we can master that flow of only ever doing what is most inspiring to us, then we truly be living 5D. That <laughs> is going to take a lot of practice for all of us. And I don't expect us to master that, you know, this year, but that is something we can be practicing and moving into more and more and more only doing what is fully resonant, fully inspiring, fully intuitively guided. And by doing that, we will ultimately resolve this power struggle, this ego thing. Yeah, I feel like we're just having a last ditch effort to kind of once again, slough off more of our ego, just the bits we don't want, the bits that don't serve us, tossing them out. And once more, getting rid of obligations and expectations and structures that don't service more of those going out and moving more and more into flow. This is like a stepping stone. I don't think we can do this all at once, but you know, every day, every week, every month, every year, we go closer and closer to truly living that formless existence that will be so, so satisfying once we get there. And we will. <laughs> we're just experiencing the road trip of getting there for now. So I think that's it for this reading. Kind of an odd one. I'll chalk it up to Leo season, bringing all of our egos out to play. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in, guys. It is, again, my special pleasure to do these Hadarian transmissions because the Hadarians are so excited and you guys are so excited and I just I freaking love how we are creating this one little vortex where we can all meet and connect and resonate in a way that we have not been able to since we've been here because we have been so separated we've been so separated so it is such a pleasure to be able to I feel us all coming together just for a moment here so thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you again soon. Bye.